Hello, this is Mark Tucker, and today I'm going to show you how to write a Google Chrome extension using AngularJS. We'll assume that you have no prior knowledge of creating a Chrome extension, but that at least you've spent some time understanding the basics of AngularJS. To look at the extensions that are currently installed uh, in your browser, then you can navigate to this Chrome extensions uh, path, and it will automatically take you to this extensions page. Now, if you notice, this first uh, Angular Chrome EX is the extension that we're going to look at today. We're not going to code it per se, but we'll go through the code and understand how it works. It has a version, it has a description, and if you notice here, it has a file path. What that uh, um, the reason why we have that is because Google Chrome during development allows you to point to a specific folder on your file system and actually loads the extension from there as opposed to having to post it out where it would be publicly available in order to actually get the extension. And the way that you would load that in is you'd click on this load unpacked extension and navigate down to the folder that contains your extension. Now the extension really is just HTML, JavaScript, and CSS and then we're just going to add some Angular uh, JS to it as well. Um, if you need to make some changes to your extension then you'll need to come back and click on reload here um, and what you notice here is on this uh, toolbar there is a tooltip and a button and that's going to be what opens up our pop-up. So let's take a look and see what this um, app is going to do, um, this extension. And so we're on this AngularJS page. It has this super heroic JavaScript um, is the part of the title, it has the URL. And when we click on this extension, it's going to look at this page and go ahead and pull out this title and pull out the, the URL and then look for all the anchor tags that are on this page and any one that starts with HTTP or HTTPS, then it's going to go ahead and pull those out and list them. Um, uh, we also have a hello message here that's going to show underneath our title. So that's all that the extension does, uh, but it's a simple enough case that we can look at uh, the details on how to incorporate uh, AngularJS into it. So the first place that we need to look here when uh, we have an extension is this manifest JSON file. Um, so here is that folder directory that uh, we have and it has uh, just some regular CSS and images, some JavaScript. I have some ones that are specific to this um, application or extension and then some library ones that are for Angular and jQuery and then uh, the pop-up page in this JSON. So that's really all the structure. It's not, um, there's not a lot to it, but what makes this special is this manifest JSON file which uh, Chrome is able to read and, and find out more about your extension. So here we've already seen the title and the version number and the description and the large icon and then on the toolbar we saw this icon and this small title. And when we click that button, it opened up a page, and that was the pop-up HTML page. Now, something that else is happening behind the scenes that you uh, may not realize is that uh, for every once the extension has been enabled, for every new tab that you um, open or for every tab that you refresh, this content script is going to be associated with that page and have access to the uh, DOM of the page that's being browsed. So in this case, we're attaching jQuery and this content script to every new uh, page that opens up. And that happens on document start, and we're able to uh, attach it to every page because it matches this uh, wildcard um, URL here to saying that these are all the different uh, pages that the content script should be loaded on. So let's go ahead and look at a little bit more code here. So we know that when we click on the button, pop-up HTML is the first thing that gets loaded. So let's take a look at that. So just a regular HTML file. Um, it has a head tag. It's got a little bit of HTML5 with a header. Um, and it's got some AngularJS sprinkled on in it. It's got ng app. So we've defined, a, defined our module. And one thing that noticed is that if you're writing a Google Chrome extension, it seems that you uh, need this ngcsp attribute um, associated with it. Um, so you can read that a little bit more in depth and to better understand that. Then we have just a regular link to our uh, pop-up CSS. In this case, it's really just uh, telling us the, the size of that pop-up window. Then we have a reference to our app.js and pop-up.js. And here's our uh, header 
and we have a div that's our controller so we're looking for a page controller here in just a, a minute it has some uh, binding with message title URL and then it has an, a repeat that for every page info and this page infos then it's going to grab the URL off this page info object and go ahead and ex, um, include that as well so that's really all that the um, markup uh, does uh, for this pop-up HTML, but it is calling this app.js. So let's take a look at that. Here we're just defining an Angular module, and that's what we're this, you know, the same name that we're using over here in the app. Then the next thing is we have this pop-up JS, and we're adding to that same uh, module a controller, and we've named it page controller. And right away we're going ahead and sending setting the message. Um, on this scope to this uh, hello message that shows up at the uh, towards the top of our pop-up. Then we use some specific Chrome um, calls, chrome.tabs.query, and we're saying let's find whatever the active tab is. So the active tab would be the tab that you're browsing. And in most cases, there's really only one active tab. But in the case of debugging your extension, uh, then there's actually would be another uh, tab that's that's kind of a pseudo tab that's associated with that. Um, but it seems like in all cases, then the very first one is really the one that we want. So we make sure that um, we grab the first tab and grab its title and URL, and that's how we get the, the current page that we're on. Then we can call crown tab send message. Um, we're sending a message directly to that one tab. And we're sending it an action of page info. Since a content script, and this is really, uh, we're sending it to the content script that's associated with the page that's on that tab. Um, since the content script can listen for multiple messages, we're just saying uh, we want you to listen for the page info message. And when that uh, comes back, then we'll get a response. And we'll take whatever it is that response is, and on the scope, we'll add that to the page infos. That's the thing that we're going to repeat through here uh, with our uh, ng repeat is this page infos. And then we need to call scope apply so that the the page uh, the pop up page will actually refresh. So that's all that happens on this uh, pop up side. So on the content side, then every page is going to have this content script. And uh, what it does is right at the beginning, as soon as that uh, page is, or tab is refreshed or it's loaded, then it's going to add a listener. And then what it's going to do is it's going to listen for this page info action. And if it finds one, it's going to go ahead and create an array for us. We're going to use some jQuery to go through all the anchors, um, uh, create a new page info object, look at the href off of that uh, anchor. If it's uh, not null and if it starts with HTTP, then we're going to go ahead and assign the href as the URL on this object. And then we're going to add um, this page info to our uh, page infos array. And then we can send the response back to page info. So now we've communicated, we've received the message from the pop-up uh, JavaScript, and we're going to send the response back to the pop-up JS. And so that's how we're able to then grab that response and uh, just set it here on our scope and refresh. So that's really all there is to including uh, AngularJS as part of um, an extension. But let's just take a look um, at how we're going to debug this. So sometimes it's a little bit challenging. Here we're on this page, um, and this is just regular uh, debugging that we can do. And we can go ahead and refresh this. Uh, page and now um, we've got uh, this page and we've got a breakpoint here set um, so we've got the right content script and uh, you kind of have to do it this way with this uh, um, debugger statement so you get to the right page but here we've got the um, the, the uh, command that we want to go ahead and do a breakpoint on but it's not running so we need to go ahead and click on this and once we click on this, then the pop-up is actually going to send the message. And now we're over here. And because of this debugger statement, we could go ahead and you know, walk through um, this and, and see what the response is and you know, debug our code here. And you know, we can just take a peek here. And you know, here are all of our different um, objects that, uh, that we've got added to this array that we're going to then go ahead and send back. So um, that is how we would actually debug the content script side of things. 
um, in order to debug the the pop-up itself you can right click on the um, right here and do inspect pop-up or you can have it open and right click and say um, inspect element so now you can actually look at the HTML that uh, is associated with this you can go ahead and look at this um, the source here's the pop-up JS source and you can set a breakpoint here and then but in order to get this to load again so that we could look at that breakpoint we need to type in location reload true and then now we're actually debugging the the pop-up uh, JavaScript that extension there so that's really all there is to uh, to it to go ahead and uh, create a Chrome extension that has Angular JS. If you're interested in uh, more, then you can go ahead and go to my um, GitHub, this Angular Chrome EX, and look at this uh, the different commits. This first commit here is going to have the uh, the stuff that you need.